on. It's the end of the second full week in June, and uh, actually it's almost the end of the uh, third. We have one more week to go and then some extra few days, and we're into July. It'll be the 4th of July before you know it. And then Halloween with Brad Steiger. Lots of things coming up very fast. If you have visited sightings.com, great. You'll know that it is an unusual destination full of all kinds of information that you'll find nowhere else, eclectic and common, and certainly information that will make you think because it comes from all around the world 24 hours a day. Headline news, featured stories about UFOs, ETs, all kinds of things, science and technology. It's turning into quite a sight, and we thank you for the kind email. If you haven't been there, by all means, go and take a look and read and enjoy some of the stories. There uh, certainly are a ton of them. Brian Veik is our, well, he is uh, he is it. He is our investigator. He is the man who is really the driving force behind this, and we're happy to spend time with him once a month. We have special guests coming up in a few minutes as well. Okay, welcome back. Jeff Rents and Brian Bike. It is Sightings.com night, and we have a special guest to tell a story tonight that is really going to be amazing. Brian, why don't you introduce this young man to us, if you would. You bet, yeah. Yeah, I have, um, gosh, I guess it's been a, over the years that the gentleman has uh, been writing to me and that, and he's been some reports and what's been going on back in Manitoba. Uh, recently, he sent me a very large uh, story, his story, on a UFO ET men in black and uh, these are his encounters and he put this report together and it's fascinating and uh, I believe we're going to have a wonderful guest here he's a friend and I do consider him a friend so I'd like to welcome you Todd to the show and uh, the Jeff show here Hi, Hi Brian Todd. thank you very much I really appreciate being a uh offered the opportunity to come on tonight. And hi, Jeff. It's great to meet you, too. Hi, Todd. Thank you very much. Uh, the check is in the mail, so don't worry. <laughs> it's, you know, it's as Brian was saying, it's been years that he and I have, have been conversing through emails, and that's really been how we've been talking back and forth. And this is really the first time I verbally had the opportunity to say hi to him. So I, I feel very happy to be able to be on the show with both you guys. This is a real, real honor for me. Thank you. That's nice. Isn't that nice when you can actually hear a voice after you've been writing to someone for a long time like you have and, and get to talk yeah, to Yeah, you them? know, it's funny, Jeff. I don't know why we have, we didn't uh, speak. There's no reason why. It's just that, I don't know, maybe we just get, get around to it. But I know I was calling people all over all over the world, actually. So I'm, I'm just glad, and it's nice to hear his voice, and, and sure happy you got on with us tonight, talk because it is an important and amazing story. Very good. All right, Todd, what kind of a childhood did you have let's start out there at the beginning were you a normal kid uh Um, with unusual things happening to you or were you an abnormal kid with normal things happening to you i tried to be normal i guess and tried to fit in with all the kids um i was never really well received i i was always not good with kids we'll put it that way i i was i was more a loner than anything and always the you know first to be picked on and last to be picked for a team sort of thing and and in my years going through I had experienced a lot of weird things that I thought were normal because well growing up and first time through everything sure. you didn't know what was well really kids didn't know of course that's Sorry? supposed to be what childhood is about you have no real preconceptions and you're open to things and because children are open to things many more things manifest themselves to them what are some of the things that that happened to you that you now realize were a little unusual. And what age were you? Well, things to begin with, things started for me at a very early age. I was only months old when I was outside with my parents, and I would see these things in the sky. And what they were, I still don't know. I've seen various pictures on the internet of things that have been photographed in the sky, and they almost look lifelike, almost like a, a giant cell of some sort or something, but morphing, different colors, different shapes, different sizes. Moving they around? Expand or contract. So they'd move around? Oh, yeah. They would, they, they'd be in the sky for, you know, a long time. It wasn't often that I'd see them, but, I mean, that was really the first thing that I picked up on when I was younger. I already knew what clouds were. I mean, we're talking, you know, right only months old, and I knew what clouds were and birds and 
a whale. You know, I could picture them. I, I, I knew what they were when they were said to me. So I was aware in, at that sense, you know what I mean? But um, as, as things continued on in my life and I continued growing up and experiencing things, I, I sort of went into a paranormal sort of thing where I'd have dreams that would actually happen. I'd, I'd be able to see visions of the future, just small things, nothing major by any sort, but it, it would, you know, and I struck, it struck me as strange. Eventually, I, eventually I, I started to um, experience ghosts and such, but I, I don't really want to lead off away from from why I'm here right now, because it's about UFOs and extraterrestrials, and that's sure. really the only reason. But uh, let I'm me here, say so. something about, uh, if I might, and... And I'm sure Brian knows the name. Maybe have you come across the name Trevor James Constable before? Trevor James it. Constable would be well worth you looking up. He is a brilliant man who, in the 1950s and 60s, used infrared film, eight millimeter film, to actually prove that there were large living things in our atmosphere that we couldn't see because they were in the infrared light spectrum. Mm. Now, I'm just suggesting this to you, that maybe as a child you had an ability to see infrared in that spectrum, and maybe you were seeing some of these things. He identified eight or ten different types of them, and they live there. Like fish in the sea, there are things living in the air. And if you think about it, it's not all that illogical. But his no, name is sure Trevor, we... Trevor James Constable. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to check that out for sure. I mean, when I was growing up and seeing these things, my parents were oblivious to it. They never once mentioned anything about it to me as, you know, how they would point out everything to me, you know, and give it a name. So I always found that strange. Yeah. Was, well, know. that is. It is. Very good. Okay, go ahead. Um, By the way, you say your parents didn't see them. Now you know that we, if, if, in fact, you were seeing things that are up there, uh, virtually no one does. It took right. infrared film to prove them, and Trevor has still pictures, and, and he's been on the program over the well, years. I need well, to get well, him I, back I on. I really have to check that out for sure. I've never yeah. heard of oh, yeah. him or that. Yep. So. Yep. Go ahead, then, with your story. That's a, so it sounds like you had great parents. Uh, at least that part of it was good. Oh, for sure. They're very loving, very caring, and they, they give 200%, and uh, they, they're still both... Both, still both around, so and oh, I nice. love them very much. They, well, I was them... adopted, and they were my adopted parents. But well, they're your parents. Been my real parents in my heart. You know, Forget so. the biology bit; they're your parents. Uh, right. That's what counts. Exactly. Yeah. It's on a whole different. Give them an extra hug the next time you see them. Oh, I try to for sure. <laughs> Good. All right. Okay. We'll be right okay, back. Okay. Um, if we can, hang we'll on. Jump Todd. ahead a little bit. Yeah. Hold want. on. We're going to jump ahead, but we have to jump into a little commercial here first, Todd. So sure. stand by, if you would, please. Uh, this is really interesting, Brian. Um, obviously, uh, uh, a great story ahead, and already heard some interesting things. We should get Trevor on this program. Maybe we'll do that one time. Be interesting. Okay, be right back. Okay, let's get back to business. And the business is hearing a story from a young man that uh, is going to be quite far-reaching in what it covers. All right, go ahead, Todd, please. Hi, thank you. Okay, um, I'll, I'll just kind of paint the scene for you right now. Um, it's in the late 1970s. Um, I'm 11 years old, so I'm not really that young of a man. And... Uh, I'm, I'm struggling through school, elementary school. A lot of it just doesn't make sense to me, and I'm sure that I'm just being pushed through the grades just to get out of the teacher's hairs. Anyway, what was I made it that it didn't make sense, Todd? Todd, summer. excuse me. Yes? What was it that didn't make sense to you? Was it the academic part? Was it the socialization part? 